Good morning, folks. This animation shows surface temperature changes. The accompanying article has lots of details. North America was rocking yesterday. A six-pointer was the largest quake, but we also had strong quakes along the subduction zone, even creeping up into Baja. Moderate quake offshore as well. Wyoming saw two unusual quakes, a 4.0 and a 4.7. This is one of the largest quakes to hit that area in a while. The Vancouver Island quakes continued, and we even had a 3.9 up in Ontario. You lost up there, little guy? Good articles today, this one about the early forming solar system, it's a good read. It's always good to see environmentally conscious business efforts, water from windmills here. Bill Gross isn't the only one saying the U.S. may be downgraded, credit-wise, again, but he is a big fish with a bullhorn. And finally, the late heavy bombardment, an important geoformational event, may have lasted a bit longer than we initially thought. Let's have a look at the primary active region on the Sun. It is in the southern solar disk. Although it's big, it's not very complex. Lots of little spots, but all of the same polarity, opposite the big one. If this little red area next to it develops a bit, it could put off big flares. Not much happening on the Sun. You can see those active regions are crackling brightly. You can also see that dark south pole coronal hole pointed right towards us. Another two to four days we'll get hit with that. You remember this large, dark region turning towards us. That's the coronal hole from before, turning around for round three. You can see that tall, dark area turning towards us, not quite here yet, but it will be squared up with the Earth about the same time as the supermoon, on May 6th, technically May 5th, for those here in the United States, late in the night. The moon will be closest to the Earth it gets all year. That's the double plus sign. This occurs simultaneously with the full moon. Quite the coincidence. Now, right now, if you can pull your eyes away from Venus in the evening, and believe me, that's hard, the moon is between Mars and Saturn. It will move on next to Saturn just two days before that super moon I just mentioned. Now, while that's going on, let me pull this back up here and turn off the atmosphere so you can see everything. Okay, on May 6th, we have that super moon, the corona hole facing us, and Mercury is actually geocentrically opposed to Saturn on opposite sides of each other. In the next few days after that, we see Jupiter creeping in for a solar conjunction. So why do you care about this stuff? Well, you might know that we watch the planets to tell us when the next big quakes might occur. And you might remember these charts as well. Now, I've selected two of the 16 eight magnitude quakes that have happened since 2001. You can see a few similarities here in planetary geometry, but let's pull up what we just looked at what's going to be happening in the coming days in early May. You can see it matches and it even incorporates some of the geometries uh, that are missing from the other dates. Kind of puts it all together with Mercury and Saturn opposition being the lone difference there. Remember folks, these circumstances don't mean a quake is coming, but this is a heck of a lineup. It's just some of the circumstances we've noticed as being present when these big tremors take place. Let's keep an eye on all of this as it's coming folks. That's the news. Be safe.